in this video, we'll construct the volume of this blue cone, the region trapped between this blue cone and this red plane z equal to 1. The cone is given by this quadratic equation, z squared equal to x squared plus y squared. And we're going to construct that integral as a triple integral in cylindrical coordinates. So I should integrate 1, but because I'm in cylindrical coordinates, I get a factor of r automatically and then I've chosen an order of integration dz, dr, and d theta. One approach is to take this region and project all the points in the region down to the xy plane. And when I do that, of course, I get a circular disk. And because it's a disk, we should expect the limits of integration for theta to go from 0 to 2 pi. The circle that forms the boundary of the disk is x squared plus y squared equal to 1, the unit circle. And I know that because it's this top portion being projected down. And that's where the z coordinate is 1. If I take z equal to 1 in my equation below, I get the unit circle equation for that boundary. Once I've determined theta, I might fix a typical value of theta between 0 and 2 pi. There, I've drawn one in the xy plane. And then I think about the radial values that go along that ray that theta determines, and we enter the region at theta equal to zero, or r equal to zero, a radial value of zero, and then we walk along that ray until we get to the radius being one, and that determines our limits of integration for r. An alternative way of doing that is to think about what that choice of theta represents in three dimensions. Here I've drawn theta down in the xy plane, and now I think about taking a slice of that in a plane that is containing the z-axis parallel to the ray that theta determines, and that cuts out a triangular portion here of the cone. I'm going to draw that radial slice in the r-z plane, the axis coming along the ray that theta determines is r, and then the vertical axis is z. And I get this triangular figure here. The line that's determining the profile of the cone is z equal to r, and I can get that just by seeing that this is z squared equal to r squared, and then I'm solving that for z, so z is plus r on this right-hand side of the cone. I can now see the limits of integration for r again, looking at the values r goes from 0 to 1 to be in my triangular region. And then using this picture, I can fix a typical value of r and think about the values of z that go with it where I enter and exit the region. And I enter when my z value is equal to r along the diagonal line, and I exit when my z value is equal to 1. So this determines my limits of integration for z z goes from r to 1. If you were to choose a different order of uh, integration, so an alternative order here might be to do it in the order dr, dz, d theta, having this picture can tell us how to set that up as well. Again, theta will go from 0 to 2 pi. I now determine my values of integration for z next, and I look at this picture and I see that z goes from 0 all the way up to 1. So that determines those limits. And then just as we did before, but now for z, I think about a typical value of z in between there and think about how it slices through the region. When r is 0, it enters, and when it exits is when my r value and my z value agree. So my limits of integration for r will be from 0 to z. If you calculate either of these integrals, you'll get the same value, and that value represents the volume of this cone under z equal to 1.